What's up? Autoimmune hemolytic anemia is a condition when due to a break in the immune system, organisms begin to produce immunoglobulin G antibodies against own red blood cells. And destruction of red blood cells we call hemolysis. With destruction of red blood cells, the concentration of hemoglobin in the blood decreases, and decrease in hemoglobin we call anemia. Now we have to discuss the key steps in pathogenesis. So in the bloodstream, we have a lot of red blood cells that are circulating through the organism. Red blood cells inside them contain hemoglobin, and as we know, the function of red blood cells is to carry oxygen to the peripheral tissues. Humoral immune defense in our organism is provided by plasma B cells. The function of B cells is to produce antibodies against antigens. And the function of B cells is regulated by T helpers. T helpers basically tell B cells which cells are friends and which cells are their enemies. And obviously, in normal condition, T helpers recognize red blood cells as friends. But some viral infection or autoimmune disorder can affect the function of T cells. And in affected states, sometimes they cannot recognize which cells are friends and which cells are antigens. And in this state, T cells force B cells to produce immunoglobulin G antibodies against own red blood cells. Exactly this condition called immune break, antibodies against own cells called autoantibodies, and important that it's immunoglobulin G antibodies. These autoimmunoglobulin G antibodies bind to the cellular surface, and in this state red blood cells circulate in the bloodstream until they reach spleen. In the spleen there are a lot of macrophages, and the specific feature of macrophages is that they very like immunoglobulins. They do not care about red blood cells, they like only immunoglobulins. And when red blood cells come into the spleen with immunoglobulin on their surface, Splenic macrophages rapidly bind to immunoglobulin G on red blood cells, and by phagocytosis they take out red blood cells from the circulation and destroy them. As a result, the amount of red blood cells in the circulation decreases. With decrease in red blood cells, the concentration of hemoglobin decreases, and decrease in hemoglobin we call anemia. Anemia will manifest with weakness, fatigue, shortness of breath during physical exercises, also, patient with anemia will have a pale skin and conjunctiva. Also, if anemia progress, new symptoms begin to appear. It's lightheadedness, headaches, severe fatigue, shortness of breath even at rest, and irregular heartbeats. In the bloodstream, hemoglobin is degraded to unconjugated bilirubin. Increase in unconjugated bilirubin causes jaundice. Jaundice manifests with yellowing of the eye sclera, so-called scleral ictrus, and yellowing of the skin. Unconjugated bilirubin then delivered to the liver, that converts unconjugated bilirubin into conjugated bilirubin, and conjugated bilirubin is excreted by the urine and by the bile. Because there are a lot of unconjugated bilirubin, liver makes a lot of conjugated bilirubin, and increase in conjugated bilirubin causes darkening of the urine thereby it gives urine a dark color. In response to decrease in red blood cell count, bone marrow begin to produce more reticulocytes, from which red blood cells will be formed. As a result, in blood analysis, we will see increase in reticulocyte count. To explain this, we know that red blood cells are produced from the stem cells, that then are differentiated into myeloid progenitor cells, and then undergo differentiation into erythroblast. Erythroblast then mature into reticulocyte, and reticulocyte then mature into red blood cells. So, in order to increase red blood cell count in peripheral circulation, bone marrow initially produce more reticulocytes. Thereby, initially, we will see increase in reticulocyte count, and only then reticulocytes will mature into red blood cells, and it will cause increase in red blood cell count. Also, we have so-called Coombs test. By this test we can determine the presence of immunoglobulins on red blood cell surface, which is immensely important in diagnosis of autoimmune anemia. The first treatment option are corticosteroids as prednisolone, methylprednisolone and dexamethasone. 
Corticosteroids, as we know, stimulate myelopoiesis and inhibit lymphopoiesis. So when we prescribe corticosteroids, they induce apoptosis of lymphocytes, so the amount of B lymphocytes decrease, this decrease in B lymphocytes autoantibodies production decrease, and the lower is the amount of immunoglobulins against red blood cells, the lower will be the rate of phagocytosis by macrophages, thereby the lower will be red blood cells destruction, and as a result the higher will be the red blood cell count. The next option is rituximab. Rituximab is anti-CD20 antibodies, and CD20 receptors are present exactly on B cells. So with injection of rituximab, rituximab targets B cells, and with binding, rituximab induces apoptosis. With decrease in amount of B cells, the production of immunoglobulins G against red blood cells decrease, thereby phagocytosis by macrophages decrease, as a result red blood cells destruction decrease, and the amount of red blood cells in the blood will increase. The next option is intravenous immunoglobulin G. Intravenous immunoglobulin G causes short-lived increase in red blood cells. The concept here is that with infusion of intravenous immunoglobulin G, basically we distract macrophages from immunoglobulins that are binded to red blood cells. Because macrophages, they do not care about red blood cells, they like only immunoglobulins. So now, instead of 10 immunoglobulins that are present on red blood cells, they will consume 5 immunoglobulins that were injected and 5 immunoglobulins on red blood cells. So we save 5 red blood cells from destruction by macrophages. As a result, they will remain in the circulation and this will cause increase in red blood cell count. And the rescue option is splenectomy. As we see, spleen is the home of macrophages and thereby the site of red blood cells destruction. So by splenectomy, we eliminate the site of red blood cells destruction and obviously with decrease in red blood cells destruction, red blood cell count will increase. Okay, fine. Ciao! What's that mean? Ciao. It's Italian. It means food. 